Guys, this is video number two in our psychometric chart series. We're going to plot one point on the chart and kind of figure out some of the characteristics of that point based on where it's at. We're going to take a temperature and relative humidity reading, put it on the chart in the proper spot, draw a few lines so we can figure out some of the other characteristics of that number. We're going to use 80 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb, 50 degrees relative humidity, here is our point. We find 80 degree dry bulb at the bottom of the chart, located right there. Follow that line up until it intersects the curve for 50% relative humidity. We'll plot our point right there where they intersect. And we can make some judgments about the characteristics of this particular area by drawing a few lines. You guys can see at the very top of the chart where that orange line ends the top left corner. All the way down to the bottom right corner, you see lines for enthalpy. So if we follow that same slope with a line that goes through our point, you can figure out the enthalpy for our particular point on the graph. Our 80 degree dry bulb, 50% relative humidity. See, we draw our line up and we're right around 31 and a half or 32 as far as enthalpy. Here is a closer look at where our line ends up at the top of the chart. You see, we have about, I'd say around 31 and a half, 32. BTUs per pound of dry air. You can see our enthalpy sign there. So that's where we end up as far as figuring out what enthalpy for our point on the chart. So let's figure out a few other items about our point. If we look on the side of the chart, the right side, we have a 60 degree dew point. Now we got that number from drawing a line directly across the level of the chart from one side to the other. You can follow the lines that are on the chart. From our point, to the right side dew point measurement. So we're 60 degrees, meaning at 60 degrees, our air mass can no longer hold the moisture content and it will start condensing out. Like if we had a 50 degree drink on the counter under our conditions of 80 and 50% relative humidity, it will start to sweat because it's beneath our dew point, which is 60 degrees. Here is a closer look at the side of the chart where we have our dew point, you see our 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. That's our dew point temperature. We drew our line across at 60. The reason why this is important is because this is the temperature which things will condense, like on our coil, your ductwork in the crawl space will condense if it passes below the outdoor dew point or the crawl space dew point. That's why we have so many crawl spaces that are just horrible for the lack of insulation, leaking air. And it's a significant part of what we do. So that's the way where we locate that on the psychometric chart. If we extend the line across like we were doing the dew point, we get to vapor pressure. We're not going to go into that a whole lot, but that is just the way that we're going to locate that number. Vapor pressure is very important for our CFM conversion that we'll do later. It's basically just think of it as there's water vapor in the air. It has a certain amount of pressure that will increase and decrease based on the moisture content of the air. If you follow the chart, you draw a line upward or increase the amount of humidity, that number will increase. Guys, we now have a blue line drawn diagonally. You can see all the lines across the chart in that same slope. That follows our measurement for how large of a volume is one pound of dry air. How many cubic feet? So we can figure out how many cubic feet our pound of dry air at that temperature, and that point on the chart, how much area does that occupy? The higher the amount of latent and sensible energy in the air will increase the amount of space one pound of dry air will consume. If you think about temperature as kinetic energy, molecules moving faster and faster, you can see how as things increase in temperature, they would take more room. So as the chart goes from left to right, the amount of volume of one pound of dry air will increase. Knowing that if you go upwards on the chart, you'll be increasing the amount of water in the air. If you go to the right, you're increasing the dry bulb temperature, sensible heat in the air. Both of those changes increase the specific volume of the air per pound. You see our 14 cubic foot volume per pound of dry air. As we go to the right and upward, that will increase. 
I think that's one of the more difficult things to understand about the chart. But just think about it as excited particles. As you have more heat, more energy, it's going to expand more and take up more space. As it cools, it will contract and take up less space. So from left to right, from dry to moist, will increase the amount of space that specific pound of dry air will take as far as cubic foot volume.